Halon, Spain, the town where the wine flows like water and the people are as friendly as can be. So come on down and have a glass or two or three. Halon is where the olive trees whisper to the pine trees, the orange groves dance with the vineyards, and the scenery takes your breath away. Today we'll cover the wine, the food, the name, the markets, the history. I'll show you one of the coolest vintage shops I've ever seen, and I'll tell you why I would love to live in this little town. Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. Halon is a beautiful little town in a valley surrounded by mountains and has really captured my attention over the last few years. I'm wondering if it remains such a small town because of all the confusion around the name. Although I doubt the Spanish are confused. You see, there seem to be two different spellings of this town, X-A-L-O and J-A-L-O-N. Either way, you would pronounce this Halon. I was watching another video about the town and the person in the video pronounced it Shalom. Looking into the pronunciation of the X a little bit more, I learned that in medieval times, the pronunciation of X in Spanish was sh, like share or shame. But in modern day, the pronunciation became the J sound in Spanish, which sounds like an H in English. So either way you spell it, we say halon. But then I read that the spelling X-A-L-O is Valencian or Valencian, which is the regional language, and J-A-L-O-N is Spanish. Well, in both cases, we're talking about the same charming town. I came to know this special little town because every Saturday it has one of the most fabulous markets, also known as Rastros, that I've been to in Spain. People come from all over the region to this market to explore thrift items and antiques. To me, it always seems to be a little bit more pricey than some of the other markets that I go to, but the quality and amount of antique items are on another level. This is the market where I bought two wooden chairs and a table for my patio years ago for just 30 euro. I found plenty of other items here too. Even if you aren't wanting to buy much, this market still has so much to explore. You could easily spend hours here, and I do on most Saturdays when I'm in Spain. Once you're done walking this market, just a little bit further down the road, you'll find a small farmer's market as well with local foods and art. There may also be live music for you to enjoy. I've also read that on Tuesday mornings in Halon, there is a fresh produce market. For those of you who have heard me talk about Pago, Spain, this is about a 30 minute drive from Pago. Driving from my little town, you have to head south up some windy mountain roads and then back down into the valley before finding your way to Halon. If you're someone who gets car sick, there are other ways that don't take you up the mountainside. Halon is in the province of Alicante, but that province is still within the Valencian community. I think my side of the mountain range in Pago is a little closer to Valencia, where this side of the mountain range is slightly closer to Alicante. This area has been inhabited for centuries. While you're visiting, you can even see prehistoric paintings nearby. The city of Halong has seen it all, from Moorish rule to modern times. It's a living history book and its streets are paved with stories. The Moors of Halong knew their wine and in 1472 they sent a selection to the Valencian court that would become the foundation of the region's economy for centuries. They have won national and international awards for their wines and you should definitely plan to try them while you're in the area. While my friends and I were visiting the market in April, we walked across the street to Bodegas Holon. This is a winery that provides delicious wines at very reasonable prices. The value is excellent. If you check out their website, you can also schedule a visit to the winery for a wine tasting and learn about their process for making wine. It is 15 euro, lasts about 90 minutes, and includes sausages, cheeses, almonds, and even something that translates to crunchy donuts. If you walk a little further up the main road, you'll find another winery, Bodegas Rico. Everything here is housed in a very old building, which I found to be really cool. If you visit their website, you'll find that they offer what they refer to as a masterclass for just 15 euro per person. They start out by taking you on a drive to one of their vineyards. They'll talk about the area and of course, the grape. Once you return to the winery, you will receive a tour of the facilities, followed by a visit to the cellar, where you learn about different aging methods. At the end, you will get to enjoy a wine tasting along with local sausages and other local treats. I haven't had the opportunity to participate in either offering from these wineries, but I will definitely be signing up during my next visit to Spain. 
When I was checking out the town on a recent visit, I popped into the local vintage shop for the first time. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it is one of the coolest vintage shops I've ever been to. Not only because of the amazing selection of vintage items, but also because of the photographs all over the store. There were these incredible up-close photographs of some of the most legendary music artists of all time. At some point, I had a chance to chat with the shop owner. As it turned out, he was the photographer behind the camera of these stunning photos. He told me the unlikely story of how he ended up being a photographer for during concerts for all of these professional musicians. It was quite a story. If you get a chance to pass through this town, be sure to stop in his shop, buy something cool, and ask him about his story. Wandering around the rest of the town, you will find some great places to eat with lovely indoor or outdoor seating options. There are also several other places to shop if that's what you enjoy. If you want to see some incredible historic buildings, step back in time and explore the centuries-old Church of Santa Maria with its blue tiled dome and Moorish origins. This beautiful church was built in 1800, but its history goes back much further. It was originally built as a smaller version on top of a mosque. I haven't been on the inside but I've heard that it's stunning. Then there is this other church that is very close to the Saturday market, so be sure to walk a little further down the street to see it. Next, I want to take you to see a really fun cycling cafe. Before I show you, let me explain a bit about cycling here in this region of Spain. With the moderate climate and great mountain roads, this region of Spain is a huge draw for professional cyclists. They come from all over the world to train in this area. It is very common to share the roads with them, so be prepared to be mindful of cyclists while driving, and also be prepared to be stuck behind them from time to time while going up a mountain road. Spain has some pretty strict requirements for passing cyclists, so keep in mind that when you pass a cyclist, you must pass with six feet of distance between your vehicle and them. With all of the professional cyclists coming to visit this area of Spain, it is pretty common to see a cyclist cafe in some of the towns that you pass through. This one in particular is called Velocal Cycling Bar. The decor is very fun and all based around the sport of cycling. There is a shop on the inside. Most visitors choose to enjoy the outdoor tables. Many of their tables are signed by professional cyclists. It is a really cute cafe, so be sure to stop by the cafe if you pass through Halong. To me, Halong would be a perfect place to retire. It's in a beautiful valley surrounded by mountains, not too far from the beach, just an hour drive to two major cities, one of the best local markets around, and high quality wine for a great price. Now, as far as home prices, I took a look at one of the common websites in Spain for property listings. You can find a traditional Spanish townhome around 1,500 square feet for just over 100,000 euros. If you have a little more money to spend, you can purchase a Spanish villa with a pool for closer to half a million, and there are plenty of other options in between. If you just want to visit the area, you could stay in a private Airbnb home rental with a pool for somewhere between $500 and $1,000 per week. I'm sure there are better deals than that as well, just depending on the dates of your visit. So there you have it, a brief introduction to the beautiful town of Halon, Spain. I hope you've enjoyed learning about its history, its wine, and its culture. If you're ever in the area, be sure to stop by and experience it for yourself. And don't forget to subscribe to join me every day where travel and adventure build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.